You've been drawn to spirituality but don't know where to start? Today I'm sharing many tips and tools that not only help you in your spiritual journey but are also a lot of fun. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I post new videos about spirituality. I'm on my spiritual journey since childhood. And yes, these are many years in which I could try a lot, try a lot of tools, read a lot of books and I really want to share as much as I can with you. But what is spirituality? In my spiritual coach training I learned this definition that I really liked. Spirituality is the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. That means we go with spirituality from the outside to the inside. We bring our focus from the material things outside to the inner things to your inner world, that's spirituality. And how spirituality looks, it can be completely different. It can be religious, if this is something that, that you feel drawn to, or it can be completely without religion, like I grew up. I grew up without religion and found my spirituality really early, I think about no, I don't know. It was since I remember I started to read books, spiritual books, and um, I just like this stuff. I like to ask these important questions about where are we from? Why are we here? Who am I? And these are the most spiritual questions you can ask. <laughs> spiritual journey is a journey to your real self, to your higher self, to more love, to more fulfillment, but also to more responsibility. Because you start to understand that the outer world is just a reflection of your inner world. If you're a spiritual beginner and it's not enough what you're learning in this video, please let me know in the comments down below because I love to share all my knowledge, all the things that I learned over these many, many years. And while I was preparing this video and what I want to tell you, I saw that this is a lot of fun for me. So please let me know what you need and so I can make more video about it. The first tool for spirituality beginner I want to talk about are books. Because for my spiritual journey, they were the most important part. And I guess it's, they are also the most important part for many other people in their spiritual journey. When I was a child, going to the esoteric bookstore were my highlights. I loved being there for hours, just looking which kind of books I could buy and buy some, of course. Today you can use an online shop for that. Okay, maybe it's not the same as going to a bookstore, depends how much you love books, but it's amazing too. Now you can go to, um, to an online shop and then scroll through books. Just start with one and then you see something else that you're interested in and so slowly but steady you will arrive to, first of all, a good collection of books and second to the, really the right books that have or they really need to get to you. They, the books will find you. This video is not a book recommendation video, that's why I don't want to spend too much time on that topic. I don't want to recommend the books here now because I have a lot of other tools I want to, to talk about and that's why in the description I will write some books I really recommend for spiritual beginners and there you can find them on Amazon or somewhere else. I myself as a full-time traveler, I can't travel with a lot of books, so I have my ebook reader and I have about maybe a thousand books on it. I guess books are the thing that will always be in my journey. Um, they will always teach me something and you can get so much out of books. Tool number two is meditation. I wish I would have started earlier with meditation. Because, as I said, spirituality is a journey from outside, from the materialistic to the inside, to finding yourself, to be with yourself, to explore yourself and your soul. So meditation is that tool that really helps to shut down the outer world and focus on the inner world. You can do that with different techniques, of course. The most typical or the easiest one is just no, okay, no, maybe it's not the easiest one, but uh, you need nothing for that. You just close your eyes and just focus on your breath. It sounds easy, it's not easy. Because that moment when you start to close your eyes and try to calm down and focus on your breath, most probably your thoughts will start to fire. They will be even more than before. That's normal, that's the activity of your brain. And the important part of meditation is not get angry 
because you can't focus. That would be the complete opposite of a meditation. So I suggest to, when you try to focus on your breath and you feel that your thoughts are going to another direction, okay, accept them. Just let them go to the other direction. Maybe you are, you stay a moment with your thoughts, but then remember to go back to your breath. And you will have to do that a hundred, thousands of times. So the thoughts will go, you will see them and then try to be back. Like, you can imagine like clouds. The clouds come and the clouds go. So, yeah, that's, that's, one, that's one meditation you can do, one technique. You can also do guided meditations. You find a ton of them um, online, of course, on YouTube as well. I will, in the description, put my favorite meditation that I recorded. You can download it for free. Guided meditations are helpful in the beginning because... Yeah, as I said, the thoughts are so many, so when you can listen to someone, you can listen to a voice that guides you through a, a little journey or through a visualization, it's just easier for you in the beginning as just sitting down and try to not think. Tool number three are oracle cards or tarot cards. First of all, what's the difference between oracle cards and tarot cards? Oracle cards, for beginners, they are really easy to use because they are straightforward, they, you understand what they want to tell you, and so they are easy. You can pick up one a day, for example, in the morning, you start your day with the, with the Oracle card, you see one, and then you can tap into that energy of the card. Or maybe the card will tell you something and advice for the day. And so this is really, really easy to use. I will put my favorite oracle cards in the description. I will put a link on it. I don't have them here because, yeah, as I told you, I don't have the space for it, but I have an app um, where I can use them. It's not the same. I have to say it's, it, they're not cards and feeling cards in your hands is just something different. Um, so if you can, just buy the real cards and they really make your life prettier. It's something that can really help you coming out of a of a dark place or of a thought spiral. They just, because they're usually are really pretty and they just bring you out and they give you another energy. So I really recommend to use Oracle cards, just buy one deck that you like, that inspire you and you will have a lot of fun with it. Tarot, tarot cards on the other side are more complicated, but also not, it depends how you use them. There are 78 cards with archetypal image, but also day-to-day -day moments, situations on it. Um, you, usually with the tarot cards, you, it's a bigger commitment. It's also nice that it's a bigger commitment because you can start to really learn all these cards. In the end, the reading of the cards is still intuit intuitive. You don't need to really know exactly, exactly what the card means because anyway, you will see a card and then you may your intuition will draw you to the exact symbol that you have to see in that moment. So it's still intuitive. Even if you learn all the, the meanings of the card, that it's a lot of fun to do, but you will always work with your in intuition. The same with oracle cards, you will always work with your intuition. I will recommend you to buy an oracle card deck and if you feel drawn to the tarot, buy it. Just keep it. Maybe in the beginning um, you, you don't want to study them already, but just keep them with you. I recommend to buy a um, Rider White Smith deck, even if you think that other ones are prettier, but if you really want to learn the meaning of the cards, this is just the easiest. First of all, because nearly every book talks about that card deck, and also because it's just the symbols are so clear you see them in such a clear way and um, yeah, I, I would say it's just, it's just the best if you start out. I also in the beginning did not want to buy the Rider White Smith because they are pretty ones out there. Um, but now I'm really happy I bought that one because you can just learn so much better and you will feel that connection much more. Tool number four, crystals. I love crystals. For me, when, um, when I went into these esoteric bookstores that I told you, I also bought crystals. Like I really grew up with, with crystals. I love them. So I usually wear one um, on my neck, but I also have some in my van before it was in my house. Um, of course, when I had an apartment, I had a lot of crystals around, big ones, small ones. And now I have just 
some of them with me, but I have them. Like, this is something I cannot live without. What do crystals do, anyway? So, they have a certain vibration, and that's why they can help you in certain moments, or they can give you certain energy. Of course, if you want to learn about crystals, I will also link a crystal book that I used in the description down below. But go with your intuition. Like when you go to a shop where they have crystals, just I would recommend you go to a shop with crystals and not only buy them online. So if possible, go there, take them in your hands, one that you like, close your eyes and just feel in it. Feel, is that the right crystal for me? And maybe you, you know a certain crystal that you want to buy, for example, the amethyst or something else, and they have maybe different ones, just try them out. Take them in your hands and just feel which one is the right one for you. These are nice to put in your house. There are other ones that are good to put in your, in your bag. Um, and of course, there are lots that you can put on as jewelry. I like to have all, most of the time, if I don't want to work on something specific, I have uh, the rose, crisp, rose quartz on my neck because it's just really a positive stone. It helps with harmony, with love, with self-love. And so it's always a recommendation to have at least one rose quartz in your house and with you. Tool number five, an altar. An altar helps you to bring you to the present moment, like meditation. And we were talking about that we go from the materialistic to the inside world. And having an altar, it just helps you to take this moment out of your day to connect with yourself, with your soul. So what could you put on your altar? Crystals. You can smudge, like putting some incense on it or something else. You can put your cards on it if you have some. You can put anything on it that you like that makes you remind, that reminds you of your spirituality. You can also put a picture on it of yourself, of someone else, of something that you love, something that you wish for, or also some deity, something that just makes you feel good and makes you feel connected with yourself and with the world around you. You can also put things on that you, that you found in nature, for example. I have the skin of a, of a lizard that I found. Um, I have some other things on my altar that just nature gave me, some gifts or gifts that I want to give to nature too. How can you use an altar? You can put it somewhere in your room or in your, in your apartment where Maybe it can be somewhere private more if you don't want that everyone sees it that comes in. Just put it in, your, in a corner or somewhere, something that you can open. And then every day take at least five minutes to sit in front of it or stand in front of it and be still, feel in your body, feel into the earth, into life itself or watch at the things, look at the things that you have on your altar, just arrive in the moment, in the present moment. You will see an altar can really help you with that. Tool number six, astrology. Astrology is a huge topic. It's not only your sun sign, like your sign, but it's also a lot more. Maybe you have already your natal chart and you know something about astrology or heard about it, or you know your rising, for example, but it doesn't stop there. Astrology is a topic that can go on and on. You can learn so much and you can learn so much about yourself. I was always interested in astrology too, but did not really use it. I knew I'm a Virgo, I'm, I have a Libra rising, and I could identify with that, but not more. And then when I started to dive deeper into astrology, a whole world opens. It's a big topic, so I will also um, link some of the best books I have read in the description down below. If you want to study astrology, I would really recommend you start with some books to see if it's something, if it's really something for you. What you need to learn more about astrology is your natal chart. Your natal chart shows you where the planets were, in which sign when you were born, that moment you, when you were born. So you need your date of birth, your time of birth, and also where you have born. To calculate your natal chart, you can do that online for free. I will put the link in the description. Tool number seven, manifesting or the law of attraction. It is a big topic and I will surely do other videos about it. But if you're just starting out and you never heard about the law of attraction, you could 
Also, like I recommend if you really never heard about it, you can watch the documentary The Secret or read the book The Secret. But if you have already heard about manifesting or you know already a bit, then please go to other books because The Secret is just not enough. Um, of course, I will also link some of my favorite Law of Attraction books down in the description. Um, it's a topic that, in my opinion, is crucial. It's important to learn, it's important to know about it. And it is not just about manifesting your dreams or what you wish or, I don't know, the, the new car or a house. It's not about the materialistic, but understanding that everything that is outside comes from you inside helps you to understand yourself better, the world better and the other people better. So, of course, it's nice to manifest the things that you want. I also manifested my dream life. But that's not the most important about the law of attraction. So if you want to dive deep into it, start with some books and I will do a lot more video about it. So don't forget to subscribe. And the last tool I recommend for spirituality beginner is journaling. Journaling is that's why it's such a good tool because it helps you to focus on your inner self again. <laughs> How can you use a journal? If you want to write daily, that's amazing, a great idea. You can write daily your thoughts, your feelings, the things that you have inside, and you will have a lot of insights because of that. I don't use it daily. It's just not how I am. I use it then when I feel stuck and it helps me to understand my thoughts better and my feelings better. Because when you start to write them down, it's just, it's like a process in your mind that starts <laughs> and then, um, you will feel different and maybe you have, you will see some things that you did not know you had in sight. So journaling, just writing down what you feel and what you think. Another thing is to write a gratitude journal. You can use the same or another journal for it and just write down everyday things that you're grateful for. This is part of the spirituality too and part of the law of attraction. Because when you feel and you know what you're grateful for, you will attract more things that make you feel grateful. Another idea is to use a journal as a tracking tool of your studies, of your spirituality studies. When you start to learn ast astrology or tarot or all the metaphysical stuff, just write down the things that happen to you, the synchronicities that happen to you, the things that you feel, what happens to you when you start to, when you start with the topic of spirituality. That it's really interesting and you will love to have these kind of journals in several years because you will look back when you're not a spiritual beginner anymore and you will feel so happy to, you can, that you can read about your story. These are just some tools I used in the beginning with my spirituality. There are of course many more but these are the ones that I think that are fun to use and still brings you to your inner self and to your higher self. You don't need tools, really. If you are just with yourself, spirituality has nothing to do with anything that we can buy. But it's just a bit more fun. It's just a nice way to connect with yourself and to start with spirituality. Find what feels good for you. Because when you start to embrace spirituality in your life, you will understand that it's not about thinking what could be good for me. It's about feeling. Feel what is good for you. What are the things that light your life, your, your way? What is the things that you really like? So ask yourself, what do my spirit want? What sparks joy? What makes me feel the most connected with my higher self? I'm really excited for you that you started your spiritual journey. With these tools or other tools, it's just an exciting and amazing journey and a really important one, the one that will get you to yourself. Please let me know in the comments down below. Talk about your journey. Let me know what you're interested in. What are your questions about spirituality? And maybe I will make a video about it. Be sure to check out this video next. And don't forget, I put a free meditation in the description down below. Thank you for subscribing and liking this video. See you in the next one.